So, how to get this experimental data? Now, because we discussed about different types of uh, uh, experimental techniques, what are the different experimental techniques? Cyclo right, cyclodichromism, different scan, scanning colorimetry, uh, fluid spectroscopy. So, we have different experimental techniques, and for each protein, right, they mutate the residue and use the techniques to estimate the free energy change upon mutation. This is wild type residue we know, right, for example, 10 kilo per mole and upon mutation if it is 12 kilo per mole, then the difference is 2 kilo per mole. This difference is mainly due to the mutation of a particular residue right from the wild type. So, to understand this right, there are several experimental groups, they are working on different types of proteins. For example, Alan Fertz from the Cambridge right, he is using Bernays as a source right. So, using the Bernays protein, so they try to mutate different residues and understand the effect of mutations in the particular protein. How far the stability changes right are different positions whether the mutation is in a specific residues or any secondary structures or based on the accessibility and so on. So, Nick Pace right he is from the University of Texas. So, he is working on dubonucleus T1 and he analyzed the mutations and showed that hydrogen bonds are important factors for the stability of the particular proteins upon mutation. Then Brian Matthews carried out the investigations on T4 lysozyme at the 164 residues and he systematically mutated all the residues, all the 164 residues right and then he analyzed the stability upon mutation. He also get the structures of all these mutants and he compared the 3D structure information with the data energy values and see in this case he can be able to tell which mutations involve which type of interactions and specifically the, uh, how much calorie is required to form any specific type of interactions because of the uh, cryptographic structures as well as the free energy values. Likewise, there are different groups like the Utani uh, is uh, uh, reported for lysozyme, right? David Shortle, the staff nucleus, and uh, C. R. Matthews on tryptophan synthesis. So, earlier days they tried to use some proteins, right? And currently, if you see the literature, they are mainly focusing on the important uh, proteins of functional functions or the disease causing mutations. So, you try to get the new proteins and identify the important locations and try trying to understand how the stability changes and how we attribute the stability with the different other features. When they started the experiments in earlier years right they systematically carried out the mutations to understand the factors influence the stability. The current scenario right because uh, we are going very far ahead. So, they want to see any particular mutants which are important for function or important for any diseases right. So, they are trying to do it this is the reason if you see the current uh, literature there are many proteins we know the mutations, but not many mutations in a particular protein. If you look into this T4 lysozyme or the Bernays or ribonuclease you will get hundreds of data, but several proteins they have only one or two mutants right is available in the literature. So, this uh, data they publish in the literature and they are uh, available in the literature and it is very important to collect this information and use it for the application purposes. So, in 1998 Fail is from Germany. So, he collected the data and he published a book on thermodynamic data by Springer. So, even they published a book this is not accessible to several investigators right and it is required to get the data and show this in the form of computer readable form. So, in this case what can I do it is very important to develop a database that earlier days uh, because of uh, not good computers are available, available as internet facility was not there. So, they collected the data and they published or they kept the data with themselves for analyzing the data. Currently right due to the availability of fast computers and the high storage capacity it is easily possible you can see the transfer the data. So, it is uh, we can do it develop a database in the one of the earlier classes we discussed about the development of database right what are the various features of database right and how to uh, analyze the data from this database right. So, now in this thermodynamic uh, uh, data for the proteins or the mutants right we collect all the data right put in a computer readable form and it is very important to provide several options to search the data because each user has a different options to search the data because they are in interested on different types of data right I will explain some, some of the details in the uh, later part. So, it is important to give the search option 
so that they can uh, search for any uh, data they require and we need to display the results that in a specific format where the user requires. Then it is also important to give the data to be downloadable in that case they can download the data and they can analyze the data. So, it is important one to develop a database for the uh, mutants as well as for the proteins. So, once the database is ready the data are available then you can use it for the analysis either you can analyze the residues which are uh, stabilizing or which are destabilizing and what are the factors which are important to understand the stability are there any relationship between amino acid properties and the stability upon mutation any specific properties which can influence the stability of the mutations. Once you relate the properties and the stability then it is possible to develop models in this case you can predict the stability upon mutation for unknown data. So, these three different aspects the first one is developing database that should be available and you should have the search options and the result you have to give the option to download. Once a database is ready then the second aspect we can analyze the data to understand what are the factors which are important for the stability. Once we analyze the data we will get the hypothesis right these are the various uh, aspects of the bioinformatics right as discussed in the first class right. then you can develop models for the prediction. These aspect you can use for different aspects for example, stability binding affinity right of the protein protein interactions protein DNA interactions right for any applications we can use this type of uh, approach. So, how to make a database what are the important factors we need to consider for developing a database right. So, first you need to put in the important information what you are interested in here I put a thermodynamic data right for the proteins and the mutants. So, you put the protam here this is the database name. So, mainly we give the data. So, what the experimental data we get delta g obtained from thermal denaturation or you can obtain from the denaturation denaturation because we put H2O because if you denature the protein we add the denaturant. So, we get the values any particular concentration if you extrapolate these values to 0 concentration you will get the value at 0 concentration this is to have the data uniform otherwise you have the value for different concentrations in this case it is uh, not uh, not good to compare. So, we extrapolate the value to 0 so we will get the value of the 0 concentration then you can get the thermal you can see melting temperature and the change in melting temperature will get delta T m we can get this is experimental data this experimental data depends upon the conditions what are the conditions we use as well as the method what are different methods we use we use the CD or DSC or fluorescence we use and different conditions for example, temperature pH different buffers and ions and the concentration. So, the major aspect of the database is the data along with the conditions this is fine. Now, to you facilitate the users right for giving more information to the users we can add the literature where exactly we get the data right if the any of the users they are interested in particular protein or you want to know more about the data then they can go to the reference and they can use uh, that reference that to understand more about the particular protein on the stability. So, in this case one part is done then if you take any particular protein so you can see it has a uh, particular sequence there are some particular structures if it is uh, known by the uh, x-ray crystallography anomalous spectroscopy. So, you can give the sequence information so where we get the sequence information Uniprot right. Earlier days we had two different databases called PIR what is PIR protein, protein information resource and SysProt and the merged Uniprot. So, currently we have the Uniprot uh, 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 ID then for the structure PDB right this is a unique resource protein data bank. So, we can we give the PDB uh, ID then also we have the some uh, motifs and the mutations for example, if it is mutated right it will give the wild type residue and where we mutate and to which residue we, we mutated. So, we give all the information. So, when you give all the information this is complete then we can start this uh, use, use this database by different search options and you obtain the results and then you can use for your analysis and for developing any algorithms for predicting the stability. Now, now we will explain about the utilities of database 
right? and the future classes I will uh, explain about how we can use database right, for uh, uh, understanding the factors which influence the stability as well as development of the models. So, first part we give sequence and structure information. So, for example, if you have the data right, first we need to see which protein. In this case, we give the protein name like a ribonuclease high chai. So, obtain from E. coli because the source is also important. Sometimes we take T4 lysozyme and the lysozyme we cannot say from the, uh, the chicken or human. Then the sequences are different, right. So, in this case, it is very important to provide the source information. So, we give the name and the source. That when you give this information, you can also get the length and the molecular weight and give the codes where we can get more information for the particular protein. So, we give the uh, PIR cisprot and currently we give the uniprot ID and this is the enzyme, then we can give the enzyme number and we give the link to Brenda. What is Brenda? Enzyme database. Enzyme database, comprehensive enzyme database, right. So, if you uh, if a particular protein is an enzyme, then you can uh, give the link. So, we can uh, get more information if anybody is interested to know about the particular uh, enzyme. Then PMD number is the protein mutant database, right? They give the literature information, right, regarding the particular mutant, and then we give the PDB information. This is the wild type, and if the mutant, the structure is known, mainly for the case of lysozyme, right? In that case, most of the mutants, the structure is known. Then we give the data, the PDB mutant. If it's not known, then it is blank. Then we give the homologous PDB entries. What is homologous PDB entries? Proteins. With the you can see the proteins which similar to the wild type structure. For example, with the R2 2 you can see the proteins which are similar to 2 R2. So, there you will, you will get as the homologous PDB entries. Then we give the mutation information, right? For example, here K91R. What is the meaning of this K91R? Lysine. Yes, lysine. At position 91. Position number 91, this is the position. Mutated to R. And this is mutated to arginine. Here they did the analysis because lysine and arginine both are positive charge, they want to see the length, right? What will happen? So, this way they changed the lysine to arginine. Then we give secondary structure, right? Here this is in coil, coil is coil, right? If you want to see the PDB in the cartoon, right, you can click here. So, you can see the cartoon structure and, and locate the, uh, the, uh, the mutant, you can see this in coil structure. What are the other regular secondary structures? Helix or strand. So, here it is in coil region, right. So, maximum surface area. So, this we discussed earlier. So, you can see how far your rest is accessible to the solvent. So, this 80, 80.5 angstrom square, this buried or exposed, it is partially exposed, right? Because it is more than 80, right? More than 50, so you can see the partially exposed or in the exposed region. So, if you have a particular mutation, we give all the information regarding the protein and the mutants. So, then we give the link, okay. This is the K91 to R. So, we display the mutation, you can see the lysine 91, okay, here is the lysine 91, right, K 91 and see the residues which are occurring near to this particular mutant. So, if you see the yellow one, okay, this one, right, here this is about, this is in 0 to 4 angstrom, right, this is 0 to 4 angstrom and the green one, so you can see this is 4 to 8 angstrom. Then here I display the data here, 0 to 4 is uh, 88 arginine, 89 glycine and the other residues if you see uh, the side chains here and the if you see this uh, 4 to 8, this is the green one. So, here also you can see the residues right which are uh, occurring within 4 to 8 angstrom. For example, green this is a tryptophan, you can see a tryptophan 90 here, this is a two rings here. Here also you can see the tryptophan here right, you can see a uh, tryptophan here right in the 4 to 8 angstrom. So, we give the data, we give the picture representation as well as give the data you can see which are the residues which are uh, surrounded by the in a particular mutant residue. So, we give the experimental uh, uh, protein information right from the uniprot and the PDB as well as the mutant. Now, we give the conditions, what are the experimental conditions they use to get the data. So, the important one is temperature right and the pH and the buffer name and concentration and the protein concentration and different measures whether they use CD or DSC or fluorescence here they use CD and which method they use thermal or the denaturant here they use the thermal. So, what are the information which you can obtain in the literature whether they report in the literature when they do the experiments then we give all the experimental conditions. 
now you get the data whether you get the data by denaturation denaturation right uh, for example delta gh 2 o for the wild type this for the mutant right when you extrapolate the data we can get the uh, slope and the midpoint of the concentration we will get the mncm like as you get thermal denaturation you can get the tm or the delta tm as well delta g right you can if you know the heat capacity and any particular temperature you can get the delta g then the reversibility right what is the meaning of reversibility right, if you uh, folded state unfolded state and other conditions you can come back right from the unfolded state to uh, folded state that is called a reversible and then the states this common states for example uh, unfolded to folded or they are having an intermediate states so this will give you the state if it is 2 then it's having a folded state and the unfolded state then then give the activity of that particular uh, protein so if you see the data so here delta g h2o is 6.4 and delta delta g is minus 3.1 kilocal per mole that means it destabilizes the protein up to uh, 3 kilocal per mole because it is delta delta g h2o then we have the thermal thermodynamic data we can give that tm is 52 and dtm is uh, 0 0.1 and give the enthalpy values and the uh, because no mcm because thermal denaturation if it is denaturant we give all these values so reversibility it is yes right because it is completely uh, this protein is reversible protein then we go with the literature right so we get the protein information and we have the mutant information and we have the experimental data and the experimental conditions right now we link with the literature so here we give the keywords that are used in this paper and the original reference where we get the data right for example here this is jbc right published in this one and we give the link to the pubmed this literature database from that you can get the free text for most of the journals so you can uh, obtain the uh, the papers and if you want more information it is possible to get the information then here we add one more aspect that is related entries so this means so for any particular mutant or particular uh, delta g values you can we gave the data right what are the entries which contain similar protein and similar type of mutants so these are the entries which deal with the uh, RNAsH and the different type of sources for example this E. coli. So, you can see all these uh, related entries and you can compare what are the different conditions, what are the different papers and how they got the different types of data and what influences the stability right based on experimental information. So, give all the information and we look at the statistics right here totally about more than 25,000 data. So, this is good enough to carry out any analysis and if you see this one they obtained from uh, 700 proteins more than 700 proteins and from about 2000 papers right the, the data are obtained from different proteins about 1800 800 proteins and you look at type of mutations this is dominated with the single mutation this is about 12000 single mutants and some double mutations and multiple mutations for the wild type also we have a lot of data about 10000 wild type data so currently if it is pdb there are about 130000 structures and wild type 10000 data but they are redundant Sometimes you can see the same protein at different concentrations or different experimental conditions, right? And in this case, if you take the non-redundant ones, you will get a less number of data. But that you can do for analyzing these uh, 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 proteins to understand the stability with respect to this contribution of these various uh, interactions. So we look at the secondary structures. So you can see the most of them are helix followed by strand, and also we have sufficient number of mutations in the turn and coil. This you can use this information to understand the factors which influence the stability in helix and strand, whether the same or different. You can see you can uh, carry out this analysis. In the accessibility, about 6,000 6, buried and 4,000 in the partially buried and the exposed regions, right? So that also you can see the importance of the location of the residues, right, for mutations. Then about 15,000 thermal and the uh, 9,600 obtained from the denaturation denaturation experiments. So now we see the mutations. Right. For example, if allylin is mutated to valine, allylin mutated to glycine. So we this showing the frequency of mutations. Right here, uh, totally how many mutations possible? Twenty into nineteen. Twenty into nineteen. Nineteen. This equal to three hundred and eighty mutations. Right. Right here, this is from. This is two. So for glycine is mutated to allylin. Glycine to valine. If this means glycine to valine so among the 380 possible mutations 
if you look into this table, some mutations they study widely studied and some mutants very rarely studied, some cases they have not have studied. The for example, what are the mutants which are which are uh, widely studied? Yeah, mainly some of the residues to alanine, so you can see shown in red is more than 100. See, uh, well into alanine, isolation to alanine, right, and methane to alanine. Because mainly because of this uh, uh, alanine scanning mutagenic studies, they can get the data for the mutagen to alanine. This is the reason why we get more number of alanine mutations. And likewise, other than that, you can see several other mutations, mainly similar type of residues. For example, isolation to valine. 430 times like valine to phenylalanine you can see the several types of mutations similar type of mutation and also you can the here you can see the asparagine to aspartic acid and glutamine to glutamic acid uh, lysine to glutamic acid why they study lysine to glutamic acid destabilizing like to see the negative charge to positive charge what will happen if you if you mutate uh, whether this is stabilized or is destabilized right so, here also some cases there is completely 0 because they do not want to mutate tryptophan to proline. Likewise, you can see the other other uh, mutations methion into tryptophan or methion into these residues. So, initially we started to analyze the different mutants, then some of the cases is really we know that this will stabilize or destabilize, right. And in the core, they do not want to mutate alanine into aspartic acid. So, in this case, this will, they will destabilize, there is uh, no fun to do it again, right. So, they want to know to some cases you would be very curious this is the reason uh, they have some mutations to so, uh, some specific mutants and some cases it is very rarely occurring. Okay, now, how to get the data for example, if you have a lot of data and if you are interested to get any specific data right we have two different types of search options one is the basic search or one is advanced search. In the basic search it will search from all entries in the data specifically the keywords and other specific entries. So, if we give the keyword or the protein name or any a source name or anything just if for example, you put like the same and click on go then this will show you that all the data which contains the term lysozyme right. So, all the proteins lysozyme and we get lot of data right in this case you will get almost all the information right. Then the advanced search we have given different options we can search with the protein name you can search with the source, you can search with the mutation. For example, if you are interested only in single mutation, then you can click on single single mutation. Then if you want to see the additivity effect of double mutation or multiple mutations. For example, if you have a double mutation right A 25 V and R 72 K. Whether the stability obtained with this mutant is a sum of A 25 V plus R 72 K we do not know. So, if you want to do this analysis you get the double mutant and get the single mutants right and add up these two and see how far you can relate right which is related you can relate or good correlation or less correlation if yes why it is yes if no why it is no right. So, if you want to do analysis you can do double mutation the multiple mutations more more than 3 right and then see how the energy value changes. As in several other aspects, for example, thermophilic proteins, if you mutate few residues, it enhances stability more than 10 to 15 kilocalories. If you see the multiple mutations, right, and see few mutations, if increase the stability by 10 kilocal per mole, you can try to understand why this is uh, very high. Is it possible to introduce this type of mutations to some other proteins that will also increase the stability, right? In that case, you can get the, uh, the proteins with the high temperatures, you can stand high temperatures that have several biotechnological applications. This will get the data for single mutation, double mutation and multiple mutation. Then you can try to get the data based on different secondary structures for example, helix or strand or turn or coil. Then accessibility, so here two options we have. One is we can get from the buried or partially buried or exposed the data we have already or we can give any range in percentage or you can also do it for the Einstein square. Anxious score is the real value we obtain from the program and percentage is normalized with the extended cell accessibility right you can do that. Then measure and the method pH you can uh, define ok because neutral pH so I put 5 to 9. Then the delta T m or T m for example, if you want to identify only the stabilizing mutants in this case you put delta T m or delta, delta G H 2 O 
hot delta delta g which you should destabilize then should be minus minus values if you do like this you can get the stabilizing structures or sometimes if you want to identify the mutants which have extreme stability right not around 0 in this case you can see that is minus 100 to minus 2 and here to plus 2 to plus 100 right then you will get the stabilizing and destabilizing extreme values and see what is the difference or if you want to see these minor changes what are the mutants which do not make much changes around 0. So, minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 you get the mutations and then see how this is attributed with no change in the stability right all these things if you do these numbers and you can get all the values. Energy values you can give either kilo cal or kilo joule. So, both are uh, possible in this database. The state you can see a two state or three states or more than three states reversibility also you can define and also you can search with the keywords and others and then if you want the current data you can put the year you change the year right you will give the data which are uh, reported recently in the literature. So, these are the various secondary structures right and accessibility that we discussed earlier. So, on this aspect you can uh, search this particular database. Then you can display options I put all the terms which we use in the database, but if you display all the results it will be big mess. So, we give the options to the users they can choose for example, if they use thermal denaturation there is no point to you uh, get uh, click on the m c m and delta g h 2 o because we do not have any data. If you denatural denaturation there will be no data on t m. So, accordingly what they require they can click on the terms and they will get the data. It is also possible to sort the data based on the wild type residue or the mutant residue or you can see the residue number or the depending on delta g values right. We have four different sorting options you can use all sorting options. It will give the priority this is a priority 1, priority 2 and priority 3 and priority 4. For example, if you, have, if you sort by wild type residue mutant residue allyl into valine there are many allyl into valine. So, the display from the beginning. So, then if you third if you use a mutant number then show the first the number least, least number at the first. If you want to have this mutation with the highest delta g values then if you start with that one then all the allyl into valine you can see at the first place with the highest delta g or delta t m. So, you can also do it by ascending and descending any order you can use it right and then you can uh, hit is default to 300, but you can increase it to get all the data right at one stretch. So, now you have the results. So, if you based on your conditions finally, you get the results and it is also possible right to download the data right for the analysis. So, when you download the data then what are the potential applications how can we apply uh, this uh, Protham data right the, the Protham has several applications we can say first one you can see you can estimate the stability of protein structures that we discussed in the previous class right we get delta g exponentially known. So, you can do the contributions and you can relate right and here we discussed about the mutation. So, we can uh, try to understand the factors which influence the stability upon mutation either different secondary structure or uh, different locations right that you can understand. Then if you have any data if you predict any data you can compare the experimental data because experimental data is available right and the third one we discussed about stabilizing residues we can also try to compare the residues identified as stabilizing or also experimentally obtained from these experiments like C D or the D S C. Then you can develop models for predicting the stability of one mutation right whether the single mutation or the double mutation or multiple mutations right. So, you can use various potentials or various features what we relate the stability with the properties and we can use these uh, properties to develop models. Then you can check the additivity for example, if you have the multiple mutations 3 4 mutations right whether the single mutations add up together this is similar to the multiple mutations or totally different how can we account that right. Then you can see the extreme stability mainly for thermophilic proteins right if you make few mutations whether the stability is increased right how to account that stability. Then see the mutants which can change the stability at least more than 2 kilo per mole either destabilize or destabilize. So, you can see these mutations and analyze what factors for the extreme stability or also you can see the uh, narrow range of stability right there is not much change right. So, then we can design the proteins with enhanced stability. 
for example, if you know the sum mutations which are uh, important to enhance the stability, then try to utilize these type of mutations, right? And then make a protein, a design a protein with enhanced stability, then it can stand at more temperatures, right? The potential applications uh, in biotechnology. So, like this, Pratham is very useful. Right, this way we get more than uh, 1000 citations for this one, it is continuously used by researchers, right. So, you can also use this, right, for any of your projects or your any of the uh, your results, fine. So, till now what did we discuss today? Stabilizing residues. Right, the first part we discussed about stabilizing residues, right, what are the various uh, factors or properties considered for identifying the stabilizing residues? Hydrophobic, Hydrophobic character, uh, long range interactions Conservative. and conservation score. Based on these uh, characteristic features, we derived four parameters, right? Surrounding heterophobicity, long range order, stabilization center, Concept. and conservation score. So we get the data for all the residues in protein structures, and we make a cutoff, right? Based on the cutoff, we can identify the stabilizing residues, and we analyzed okay these stabilizing residues of some specific properties, right? And compared with the B factors, right? And as well as some of the experimentally known information. The second part. We discussed about the database. What is the name of the database? Protham. Protham, right? This is thermodynamic database for proteins and uh, mutants. This is why they put the name Protham. So, this is thermodynamic database for proteins and mutants, right? So, if you see the Protham, I show this figure. So, here this is a folded state, okay. This is unfolded state, and this is a curve. Yesterday, I showed about the thermal denaturation curve, right. This is how we designed this logo to show the thermodynamic uh, stability for proteins and mutants, right? What are the information we have in uh, Protham database? Experimental data, mainly the thermal uh, stability or the stability upon the denatural denaturation delta G H two O, melting temperature, and uh, supported with the experimental conditions. Which conditions they used, right, to obtain the data? Then we have add additional, additional information regarding the sequence and the structure and the mutation. Right, as well as the literature information. Right, then we have different options to search the data as well as to obtain the data, any and sort the data. Once you get the results, then it's able to download and you can use the data for any of these potential applications because Protham has several uh, applications. In the next class, I will discuss one of the applications: how to relate different amino acid properties to the stability of the mutations and the models to predict the stability upon mutations. Thanks for your kind attention.